Here we are, it's 2023, and I'm sure many of you are starting to get ready to take your PTE. Well, you've come to the right place because today we'll be looking at how you can pass PTE in 2023. So, the very first thing that you'll want to do is download the PTE Goal Setter, which you can get for free by clicking the link in the description of this video. In this goal setter, you can write in daily and weekly PTE preparation goals. And there's also a checklist where you can put in more specific tasks that you should complete before test day. Throughout this video, we're going to fill in a lot of this goal sheet, so I highly recommend you download it, print it out, and fill in yours as we go. In this video, we're going to be looking at eight things you can do in 2023 to make sure you get the score you need on test day. And I'm going to show you the most up-to-date, high-quality resources you can use to prepare properly. Now, you might be planning on taking your PTE exam in a few weeks, in a few months, or maybe even late this year. Whenever that is, you're going to want to be prepared. So the first thing you want to do is set clear goals. So this takes a few steps. First, identify the score you want. Then figure out where you are now. You can do this easily by taking a mock test. If you're at a 72 and you need to get to an 84, for example, you then need to figure out what it will take to reach your desired score. Only you will know what it is you need to do to get that desired score. But here are a few examples that you could write down. It could be do one practice test every two weeks. Or if you're worried about getting the highest possible writing score, it could be practice using a wider range of sentence structures or reduce your grammar mistakes by 50%. As I said, getting feedback from a mock test or from a teacher really is the best way to find out what exactly your goals should be. But you might think of more as you watch this video, so let's keep going. My next tip is to make sure you fully understand the test. Even native speakers or highly proficient English users will need to understand what they need to do on test day. For example, when you get to the retail lecture task, do you immediately know what to do or how to answer the question? Or for a select missing word task like this one, do you know what to do? The best way to understand the test from top to bottom is to get access to a large amount of practice questions so that when you see a question on test day, you're not wasting time figuring out what you need to do. My recommendation is to check out e2testprep.com. We have hundreds of high quality practice questions on all parts of the test. Even if you're familiar with the test, you're still going to want to practice. So definitely write somewhere in the checklist section of the goal setter, find and complete practice questions. As you learn more about the test, you can get even more specific with your goals by focusing your attention on certain tasks, like highlight incorrect words or reorder paragraphs. My next tip is to get help. It's very important to find some allies before you take your test, to find people who can help you to improve. Now, there are a few ways you can do this. You might know a good PTE teacher who you can get in touch with, but there are also some great places you can go on the internet. Of course, our E2 PTE YouTube channel is a great place to start. We've got a lot of helpful free videos there that will give you good advice. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you're looking for more teacher interaction though, you can check out our website and register for a one-on-one -on -one tutorial with one of our expert teachers. You might even have some friends who have taken the test. It's definitely worth asking them for preparation advice. This next tip is important. Build strong reading and listening habits. If you're in a situation where you're not using the language regularly, this is going to have a big impact. In fact, it's usually one of the first things I ask my students about anytime I'm teaching a class. Now, if you use English regularly in your work or in school, then this might not be a priority. 
But if your scores are noticeably below what you're aiming for, it may be worth building the right habits. Reading and listening really help in all areas. The more regularly you are exposed to authentic and accurate language forms, the more tools you'll have to get that score you're aiming for. Proficient users of English use a wide range of internalized habits to make their ideas clear. They stress certain words. They clarify ideas with specific phrases in writing and speaking. You definitely want more exposure to this. The more exposure you have to this, the faster you'll begin to internalize those structures and words. My advice for building reading habits is this. Read the news. This could be the BBC News or Al Jazeera in English. Newspapers or news apps have articles on health, environment, technology, and business, which will expose you to a wide range of useful ideas and language. You can even read about more fun topics like sports, movies, and art. Any of these topics could appear in a PTE exam. Of course, you're not tested on these topics, but you'll find them a bit easier to navigate if you're more familiar with the language. As for listening habits, here's my advice. Listen to news, radio, or podcasts. I strongly recommend checking out the BBC, CBC, that's in Canada, or ABC National Radio, which is Australian. I find that the announcers at these companies have the most professional and clearest pronunciation. They'll model sentence stress and intonation in a very intentional way. Now, if you're looking for a good podcast, my first recommendation would be to check out our podcast, Everyday English with E2. They're short and have lots of great ideas on how to make small improvements to your English so you can pass your test in no time. I definitely put it into the checklist on the goal sheet. Listen to the Everyday English with E2 podcast. One thing to listen for in podcasts or the radio is something called sentence stress. I find it's the biggest pronunciation hurdle for PTE students. Now, let me be clear. It's not about accent. It's about stress and intonation. You don't have to sound exactly like a Canadian or a Brit or an Aussie. But to make your ideas clearer and more precise, you will want to emphasize words in a deliberate way if you're aiming for a higher score. We have a video all about sentence stress here on our E2 PTE YouTube channel. I highly recommend watching it before you start preparing for your speaking test. If I were you, I'd write this into the checklist in the speaking section of the goal setter. Watch, improve your PTE speaking with one key strategy, on YouTube. The more familiar you are with sentence stress in podcasts and on the radio, the more you'll be able to naturally use it in your speaking. So building these listening habits is super important. Even just 10 to 15 minutes every morning can make a big difference. Let's move on. Next tip, learn from your mistakes. This is one of the most important things, not just for PTE, but for life. If you make a mistake, or get a lower score than you hoped, or get some feedback that gives you a lot to work on, don't get upset. Don't feel down. Look at the error or the feedback, figure out why it happened, internalize the lesson, then get better. This is for all parts of the test. Whenever you get an answer wrong, figure out why you were wrong and understand why the right answer is right. If it's the reorder paragraph task, review the task, figure out why you were wrong and understand why the right answer is right. Anytime you get an answer wrong is an opportunity to improve. Now, for speaking, you should probably write this into your goal checklist. Get feedback from a teacher on pronunciation. It's hard to focus on improving if you don't know what to focus on. That's why support is essential. As for writing, if your teacher is like me, you're gonna get a lot of red colored feedback. In this case, look at the feedback and figure out how to stop doing whatever it is that you shouldn't be doing or start doing what you aren't doing. 
If you aren't organizing your ideas clearly, focus on that. If it's just your grammar and punctuation that needs a little polishing, then focus on that. So, if you are struggling with writing, you might put into your goal setter, write one task every week, get feedback, organize paragraphs clearly, or reduce errors by 50% in three weeks. And of course, you may have to do a fair amount of work to accomplish that. But of course, writing it down is the first step in reaching that goal. And this leads to our next point. Get deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is when you have a specific goal in mind with your study time. Let's imagine you sit down with your feedback. The feedback says you need to use more stress and intonation in the read aloud section and other parts of the test where you are speaking. I would write something like this into the goal setter. Practice read aloud and focus on better stress and intonation. You could review some of the lessons on the E2 test prep website and the PTE YouTube channel, and then try another practice task and get feedback. Or maybe you need to write use complex sentences in the retell lecture task. Be sure to review the lessons and techniques, practice a few times, and then get feedback. Let's move on to the next tip, and I know you're going to love this one. Sleep. That's right. Sleep. I know you like this one. Well, it's true. You need to get as much sleep as you can. First of all, sleep is what allows your brain to transfer memories from short-term to long-term memory. So make sure you are optimizing your sleep. Also, on test day, you definitely want to be well-rested. They have even done studies on the effect of sleep on academic performance. Surprise, surprise, the group that gets a good night of sleep does better on their memory recollection task. In the description of this video, I've put a link to my absolute favorite TED Talk by Matt Walker about the importance of sleep. Okay, here's the final piece of advice. Stay positive. Don't beat yourself up about forgetting things or about making the same mistakes again and again. This is normal. Anytime I make a mistake in one of the foreign languages that I speak, yes, of course, I get annoyed sometimes. But most of the time, I remind myself that I am getting better. I'm better than I was before and that I just need to review that mistake and the correct form one more time so that I will remember. Every time you get mad at yourself, you just make it harder to learn. Every time you make a mistake, it's actually an opportunity to improve. Decide how you respond, and you'll decide how quickly you improve. Well, there you go. That's it. Those are our top tips for getting the score you want in 2023. Of course, I highly recommend checking out e2testprep.com. It has everything you need for PTE preparation, including mock tests, practice questions, tutorials, and more. You can even sign up for free if you like. Anyways, that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the information that you're going to need to crush your PTE.